From Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Walter Pidgeon and Janet Lee in The People Against O'Hara. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One of the most fascinating professions is that of a criminal lawyer. And in tonight's play, The People Against O'Hara, we bring you the dramatic story of a man who has lost confidence in his ability to save the life of a young and desperate client. And as our stars of this suspenseful drama from the metro goldwyn Mayor, we have that excellent actor, Walter Pigeon, co-starring with Janet Lee, who plays his lovely young daughter. Now, The People Against O'Hara, starring Walter Pigeon as Jim Curtain and Janet Lee as Ginny. <laughs> It's late at night, a private boat dock on the Hudson River. Across the water, the lights of New York are barely visible. On the dock are a young man and a girl, both obviously overwrought. Johnny, please, please, Johnny, don't go yet, don't. Are you crazy? I can't stay here. What if somebody sees us? Hey, what place is this, anyway? I told you, Johnny, the boat club. Nobody ever comes here at night. Well, I'm not waiting to find out. Oh, I got to talk to you, Johnny. Look, I told you I couldn't come over. Somebody stole my car, but you kept calling me, telling me a lot of lies. But I had to, otherwise you wouldn't have come. What have I done, Johnny? Tell me, what have I done? Look, you haven't done anything, Teresa. I'm just trying to tell you I don't love you anymore. That's not true. Why, Johnny, why? I told you why. You got a husband now. Can't you use your head? I never loved anyone else. Only Listen you, to Johnny. Me. You know what happened when he found out that Rocky Huzak double-crossed him? He sent Rocky's body back to his wife, but she never even recognized it. What do you think he'd do to you if he found out about us? I know him. I know what he'd do. All the time I'm scared. Scared sick for both of us. But there must be some way, Johnny. If you love me, we can... Sure. Sure there's a way. You stay in Jersey. Just keep on this side of the river. I... I'm going back. Johnny! I'll be lucky if I get back by daylight. And no more letters, Teresa, understand? No more phone calls. I won't even talk to you. Oh, Johnny. Johnny. John O'Hara. Huh? Who, who are you? What is this? Keep your hands at your side. It's okay, I've got O'Hara. Oh, what are you talking about? Who are you guys? Police, you're under arrest. Hello? Oh, yes, Mrs. O'Hara. My father? Well, he isn't up yet. I... Johnny, the police. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I... Well, I'll tell Dad, of course, but you see, he's no longer in criminal practice, Mrs. O'Hara. I... Yes, yes, I will. I... Goodbye. Good morning out there. Oh, well, you're up early. So are you. Considering the hour you got home last night? Ah. Uh, Any progress with the boyfriend? Relax, Counselor. I've got other things on my mind. Now, come and eat your breakfast. Other things, huh? Mm-hmm. Like what besides your old man? Oh, I stopped worrying about you long ago. But I'm not getting married to Jeff or anybody else right now. For one thing, I want to finish secretarial school. And after that, I... What got did Mrs. O'Hara want? Oh, you heard, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, they're in trouble again. Mm. Johnny, the police. What kind of trouble? Well, his mother didn't say. I... I told her that you were in civil practice now, and very busy and happier than you've ever been. You are happy, aren't you, Dad? Of course I'm happy. And I'd be a lot happier if you married Jeff. You still worrying about me, Ginny? Oh, no, I'm not. Well, I'm worried about you. You're in love, and what do you do about it? Nothing. Well, Dad, uh, about Jeff. Well? I'm having dinner with him tonight, oh. and, well, I'll, maybe I'll do something about it then. Now you're talking, honey. Now you're talking. And uh, hurry up with the eggs. I've got to get down to the office. We 
just had to see you, Mr. Curtain. There's no one else we could turn to. You know I'm always happy to see the O'Haras. But as uh, Ginny told you on the phone, I... Well, I, I, I don't handle criminal cases anymore. But you've known Johnny all his life. And where have they taken him? I'm his mother. I have a right to be told that. You don't know where he is? The detective wouldn't tell us. Detective? Yes, sir. Ricks, he said his name was. Lieutenant Ricks. Would you know him, Mr. Cotain? Yes, I know Ricks. Uh, uh, has Johnny got a job or her? He works for a man named William Sheffield in the Dalton Street Market. Oh. He can tell you about Johnny. He likes to boy. Counselor, who is Ricks? Well, he's uh, uh, he's in the in the homicide detail, but that doesn't necessarily mean Johnny that killed nobody. I won't oh, have no, such talk. Not. Do you think Johnny could kill a man? No, no, of course I don't. Well, well I I'll have to get a lawyer for you, some good criminal lawyer. Mister no? Curtain, we only have four hundred dollars. Well, I couldn't ask anybody to take the case without some kind of a retainer. Perhaps you could borrow... Oh, my boy, he's in trouble, and we have to beg. Peg, Peg, please. (laughs) We're borrowed out, Mr. Katrin. Well, now, we can't let that worry us. Uh, Let me make a phone call. After all, old friends have to stick together, don't they? God bless you. You are the best there is. Well, there was a time when I tried 18 murder cases in a row. Didn't lose one of them. Hello? Cappy? Jim Curtain. (laughs) <laughs> Don't act so surprised. Well, maybe you can help me. I represent a boy named Johnny O'Hara. He's being held down there, and I'd like to know the charge. Thanks, I'll hold on. There's something we haven't told you. Huh? Johnny had a gun. I never knew till this morning, Counsel, I swear. I wanted to get rid of it, but no matter what, Johnny always took it with him when he left the house. I... I haven't slept since I saw the ugly thing. Well, now having a gun doesn't mean using it. But I'm glad you... Hello? Uh, go ahead, Cappy. They're holding Johnny for what? Oh, for the lover. Look, who in the district attorney's office is going to handle the case? Louis Barra. He's new, huh? No, no, I don't know him. Just one thing more, Cappy. I'd like very much to get hold of... Mr. Barra wants to talk to you. Thanks, Ricks. I'm an assistant district attorney, Johnny. I'm not a police officer. But I told the police. I don't know anything. I'm not finished. You won't be deprived of any of the rights the law gives you. I'm not going to try to force you to tell me anything, but I want to know who you were with last night. I was at the market on the eel machine. Eel machine? What's that mean? Well, at the market, they they keep the eels in the tank. Well, the compressor broke. I had to pump it by hand. Pump air to keep the eels alive. People won't buy them unless they're alive. How long were you there? All night. Got off at six this morning. And I was arrested. When you left the market, were the eels still alive? Yeah. Yeah, sure. In the statement to Lieutenant Ricks here, you said you worked for William Sheffield for about a year. When was the last time you were at his home? I've never been there in my life. What about this, Johnny? Huh? This gun. Hey, hey, where'd you get that? Is it yours? Well, uh... Yeah, it's a souvenir. I took it off a Jap. Why is it loaded? I, I never loaded that gun. I kept it in my locket at the market. 38 automatic pistol, three bullets in the clip, one in the chamber. It smells like it's been recently fired. And there's something else I want to show you, Johnny. A suitcase. You've seen the suitcase before. Yeah, yeah, it belongs to the boss, to Sheffield. I saw it yesterday in his office at the market. What were you doing in his office? Well, asking him about my overtime pay. Argument? It was no argument. I, I just told him I wanted my 63 bucks or, or I'd take it up with Knuckles. Knuckles? Knuckles Lanzetta. You know him, Johnny? Uh, not exactly, but... But he's a big shot around the markets, and I thought I might scare the boss into giving me my money. What did you see in this suitcase? Well, nothing. It was closed, just like it is now. Didn't you see a gold bar? Oh, bar? What are you talking about? Gold, a gold bar. Did you see one in the suitcase? What? That's crazy. I never saw anything. Gold bar. How'd this suitcase get in your car, Johnny? How do I know? I told you my car was stolen. I got Corvac, Mr. Barra. Oh, come in, Corvac. Hi, Johnny. Hi. State your name and address. Frank Corback, 371 Machette Lane. You work at the Dalton Street Fish Market? That's right, sir. Yes, sir. What are you doing here? What have you been saying about Sit me? Sit down, O'Hara. Cool off. That's all for now, Corback. Take him back. Yes, sir. Uh, look, I had nothing to do with that guy. Please, why don't you tell me what this is all about? At 12.30 last night, two men drove up to William Sheffield's house in your car. <clears throat> they stole this suitcase, shot Sheffield, and disappeared. Shot the boss? One of the men was Frank Corback. 
We found his fingerprints in the rearview mirror, so I guess he drove the car. Now, who fired the gun? I wasn't there. I don't know anything. Kovac said you fired it. He's a liar. Let him tell me that to my face. You were at Sheffield's house, weren't you? Ask the boss. He'll tell you who was there. He can't. You did a good job, Johnny. Sheffield's dead. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Did Corvax shoot him? I don't know. I wasn't there. It's your car, your gun, and Corvax's confession. Now, I want the truth. I told you the truth. The eel machine. I was on the machine all night. They got a watchman at the market. He says you weren't there. He says you left long before midnight. Look, I, I want to call my folks, Mr. Barrow. I, w- I want to tell them where I am. I want a lawyer to help me. Who pulled the trigger, Johnny? You or Frankie? No. No more answers. Okay, Sergeant, book him. Let's go, kid. Ah, uh, hello. Well, it looks like a cinch. All the pieces fall into place. A lawyer? Who? Well, thanks, I'll talk to you later. Who was your boss, Lieutenant? Huh? Well, Harry's got a lawyer. James Curtain. Curtain? Curtain's on this case? He, uh, was pretty good, wasn't he? Yeah, the best. Till he started drinking. But he hasn't touched a drop or a criminal case for a couple of years. Then why (laughs) O'Hara? I don't know. Well, Katane wants to see me now. Uh, Do me a favor, Ricks. Show the gentleman in. Well, Jim, now that you've met Mr. Barra, I guess you want to talk about your client, huh? I think we've got a pretty solid case, Mr. Katane. Oh, you say you've known O'Hara for years, hmm? Well, his folks and I come from the same neighborhood. They've had a lot of bad luck. They need help. Well, from all I hear, they couldn't have a better friend right now than you. Oh, but here, read his statement. Why give it to me? It's evident. Now, read it, Jim. I don't want this kid to make you look foolish. I'd like to see him first. Sorry, you can see him this afternoon when he's arraigned. I prefer to see him now. I'd appreciate it very much. I can't help you, Mr. Curtain. Right now, he's being booked. What'd you do? Sneak him out of here as soon as you found out I was coming? You know, Barrett, I once had your job. Maybe someday you'll be on the other side of the fence trying to save a life instead of taking one. You'll find it quite different. I'll see you in court. I'm looking forward to it. This your case, Mr. Curtain, John O'Hara? Yes, Your Honor. And we plead not guilty. And I should like to examine the man who signed this complaint. Your Honor, the people require a month before we go to the grand jury. I ask that the prisoner be remanded. A month, Mr. Barra? Why not a year? Uh, Mr. Barra is entitled to a month, Mr. Curtain. Why not grant it? Your Honor, Johnny O'Hara was arrested earlier this morning under conditions which would shock the conscience of this court. His home was entered at gunpoint without warrant or authority. His parents cowed... Without authority, Mr. Curtain? Mr. Barra, the servant of the people, the officer of the court, immediately assumed full charge of the persecution. He did so on the solid foundation of a statement made by one Frank Korvac, a notorious gunman, a liar, a thief, and a killer. On his statement alone, Your Honor... What is your wish, Mr. Curtain? I want Frank Horvac brought in here. Your Honor, we've asked for a month. May we have a ruling? According to the law, I cannot force the people to proceed. I have noted my views. Court grants your request, Mr. Barra. Thank you. One month, held without bail. Well, we can talk now, Johnny. I uh, read your statement, son. Were you with Corvac? I, I give you my word, Mr. Curtain. I, I don't even know what the score is. They're pretty well convinced that you killed Sheffield. I didn't even know he'd been shot. About that suitcase they spoke of. Are you sure you never looked inside? It, it was in Sheffield's office. It was closed. You said you were working all night on an eel machine. I was. The watchman doesn't back you up, Johnny. Look, look, Mr. Curtain, if he didn't see me, then he was drunk. I seen him drunk lots of times. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. You're the one in trouble, not the watchman. Now, who else saw you in the market? I, I, I don't know. It, no one that... Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, it's okay, Johnny. I went through the war a lot better than this. The police say that when they arrested you, you uh, tried to run away. But how did I know it was the cops? I thought it was... Huh? Well, they had guns. I, I, I was scared. You started to say that you thought it was... I don't know. I I saw the guns. I got scared. 
You couldn't have been scared of guns when you won that DSC at Saipan, Johnny. Put me down, I was scared. I've only one more question for you now, boy. What's your girl's name? Girl's name? What do you want that for? Come on, what's her name? I've got no girl, Mr. Curtain. All right, Johnny. Now, of course you know this is just the start. But there's something I want you to remember. Get it into your head and keep it there. You're not in here because you stole an apple off a peddler's cart. A man's been murdered, and I've got to have the truth. I, I've told you the truth. Thanks, Johnny. That's all I need to know. In just a moment, we will continue with Act Two of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Louis Cass knew how important friendship is. In 1836, he resigned as Secretary of War to accept the post of Ambassador to France. It wasn't too long after his arrival there that he became friends with King Louis Philippe. But making friends with the French people was another story. Anti-American propaganda had been too well planted over the years. But one day, Cass witnessed a street fight. With the appearance of armed troops, the fighters fled, leaving a group of bystanders about to be fired on. Stepping out in front of them, Cass told the commanding officer that he, as well as the Frenchmen with him, were innocent spectators, and that to fire on them would be murder. The officer apologized and ordered his men to put up their guns. The incident marked the beginning of Louis Cass's friendship with the French people. Gradually, despite the attempted smears by other nations, Cass strengthened the understanding between his country and France, and he was eventually responsible for the signing of a treaty by America, France, and England, a treaty which guaranteed freedom of the seas to all nations. Once more, an American had proved to the world that by helping others, you help your country. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act Two of The People Against O'Hara, starring Walter Pigeon as Jim Curtain and Janet Lee as Ginny. Only two people know where Johnny O'Hara was at the moment that William Sheffield was murdered some 18 hours ago. And the two are Johnny and the girl he called Teresa. It's early evening now, and Jim Curtain's daughter has just come home. Waiting for her is a young man. Well, Jeff, but I didn't expect you for an hour yet. Come on in. I've been trying to reach you, honey. I'm afraid our date's off. I've got to catch a plane for Boston. Oh, no. I didn't no. know the last minute, Ginny. I ought to be back, though, by tomorrow night. Oh, well, I, I guess it can wait. Wait? What can wait? The big news I had for you. Well, don't faint, but if your offer's still open, well, I'm now looking for a husband. Uh, are you kidding? <laughs> no. Oh, Jenny. Well, well, when did all this happen? Well, I decided today, Jeff. Everything's the way it should be now. Dad's on his feet again. He's happy and he's... He's happy. happy. What do you think I am? <laughs> Oh, Jenny, we've waited so long. I know. Where's your dad? I want to speak to him. Well, I thought he'd be home by now. Well, I guess he's pretty busy with that new case he's taking on. New case? Well, didn't he tell you? Look, the evening paper's full of it. Famous criminal lawyer to defend accused killer. No. No, he didn't tell me. Well, it was nice while it lasted, Jeff. It was wonderful. What was wonderful? Planning to get married. Jenny, I... Your dad can't take another murder trial, Jeff. Not alone. But you can't go with him on living his life for him. That's no way to help him. Uh, darling, you just don't understand what it's like. That that terrible strain of knowing he has a man's life in his hands. I, well, I just couldn't leave him now. He's, he's been too sick. Sick? Look, if he wants to drink, he's going to drink, just like any other alcoholic. He's not an alcoholic. He's not. All right, he just drinks. <sighs> I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean to flare up. It's just that we're always... Oh, Jeff, why, why don't you go now and, and catch your plane? Be sure to call when you get to Boston, and then maybe we'll... Maybe I'll feel more like talking. Whatever you say, Jenny. And please, please, darling, be patient and try to help us. Sure, whatever you want. It'll be all right with me. That's the whole story, Jenny. The O'Hara's, well, uh... Just was no one else they could go to. 
So you took the case. Besides, we've been kidding ourselves, honey. I'm not a civil lawyer. I'll never be a civil lawyer. Is it going to be a tough case, Dad? Oh, no, no. No, I, I, I don't think so. Well, is Johnny guilty? Ah, no, of course not. Hey, you're not worried about me, are you? Oh, you're cured, Mr. Curtain. <laughs> you bet I am. But working all by yourself, Dad, there's so much hard work involved. I've still got my contacts, Jenny, and a lot of friends. That's what a criminal lawyer needs, friends and contacts. <laughs> well, he also needs to eat now and then. Yes. <laughs> so come on, help me with dinner. Huh? <laughs> I've got to get back to work, too. Oh, tonight? Yeah, I'm going down to the Dalton Street Market. A man named uh, uh, Knuckles Lanzetta phoned the office. He wants to see me. Oh, <laughs> Knuckles Lanzetta. <Yeah. laughs> Sounds like a gangster. <laughs> just what he is, too. Oh. But don't laugh. Mr. Lanzetta's a very important man. Well, fine friends you have. Mm -hmm. Who knows, honey? Maybe he is my friend. So I see your name in the paper, Counselor. You're going to be working for O'Hara, huh? Well, maybe I can help you. Now, why would you want to help me, Lanzetta? Uh, I think a lot of you, Mr. Cortain. Once you'd done me a big favor. Yeah, it was no favor, Lanzetta. If I'd had the evidence, you'd have gone to the chair. Me, but you could have let the cops have me, but you were fair. To me, that's a favor. Maybe now I can pay you off. How? I can call some phone numbers that would surprise even you. You trying to impress me? <laughs> All right, then. Maybe i like to help Johnny. I gave him his first job. You don't want to help anybody. Now, what's on your mind? What did those cops want with me today? Hauling me off to headquarters. For questions. That flatfoot Rick's working me over. That barter. I don't know. They must have had their reasons. Oh, I'm a married man, Consular. I live respectable over in Lambert, New Jersey. I got this fish business. That's a front. No, no, no front. Besides this, I own the real estate, investments. Now, why the cops messing around? Unless that loudmouth punk's been talking about me, huh? Johnny? Yeah. All right, Lanzetta. If you want information, let's trade. Why was Sheffield killed? I wish I knew, Counselor. He was a friend of mine. He was into me for maybe 20 grand. One day he tells me he's going to pay off. Next day he's dead. How is he going to raise 20 grand? Frankie Corvac gave Barra some story about a gold bar. Maybe Sheffield was smuggling gold. Maybe Barra thinks you had a finger in it, too. Then wise him up. Why would I get mixed up with them Corvacs? Corvacs? Six of them, brothers. They're no good. What about Frankie? Troublemaker, but no guts. Would he frame O'Hara? Isn't that what you claim? All right, Lanzetta. Your name did come up. Johnny told uh, Barry that he used your name to scare Sheffield. Sheffield owed him some uh, overtime pay. That's all. That's all? Uh-huh. Oh, that Barry, that dirty... Uh, that's all, huh? That's all I know. Okay. I appreciate that you come here. Now I go home. Uh, come on, Mr. Curtain. The wife's got the car downstairs. I like you should meet my wife. This way, Counselor. That's my car over there. Some car, huh? And some chauffeur. <laughs> hey, Teresa, meet Mr. Cortain, the lawyer. How do you do? Good evening. <laughs> yeah, this is a real nice girl. A good family. <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Cortain, come out to Lambert with us. Teresa will give you chiches soup will make you cry. Thanks, uh, some other time, maybe. Uh, counselor, wait. I don't forget. Uh, why don't you take a retainer from me? I got lots of stuff for lawyers. You're a crook, Lanzetta. Someday you need me. I won't give you conversation. It's been nice seeing you, though. And very nice meeting you, Mrs. Lanzetta. Okay, O'Hara, get in there. Your lawyer's here. Thanks. Hello, Mr. Curtain. Well, Johnny, why did you lie to me? Lie to you? Now, didn't you think that I'd check on it? When the market opened yesterday morning, the eels in that tank were dead. Well, I, I was afraid of how it had looked. I, I mean, what I really did. That's for me to decide. Now, where did you go that night? I was out walking around. Walking around all night. But who'll believe me? I'll name you one man who won't believe you. Louis Barra. No one saw you? No. No, no, it was real late. Daylight almost. Look, you lie to me again, Johnny, and I'll drop you like poison. Now, how long have you known Frank Corvac? Oh, just since I went to work at the market. On my way over here, I stopped at Corvac's house. I met that family. That's quite a bunch of boys. What did you go there for? Because I wanted to. Any objections? Oh, sorry, Mr. Cortain. 
I went there to tell them that you're innocent, that I'm going to prove you're innocent. And when I do, their brother Frankie's going to have to take the rap. I told them it would go easier if Frankie named the right man. What'll they do about it? I don't know. They didn't say. You got anything else to tell me, Johnny? What? What about, Mr. Curtain? You're holding back something. Oh, I swear I've told you everything. Honest, Mr. Curtain. You've got time to think, Johnny. Maybe it's just a question of remembering, huh? I'll be by tomorrow. <laughs> Come on in the kitchen, Dad, and sit down. Now, how about a glass of milk? Oh, fine, fine. Thanks, Ginny. What are you doing up so late, huh? Oh, don't think I've been waiting up for you. Jeff just left. Mm, Sorry I missed him. Well, how's it going? Oh, not too good. Not too good at all. I've been trying to get a lead on Johnny's girlfriend. But I thought he said he didn't have any girlfriend. Yes, I know he did. You know, there's a simple clue somewhere, Ginny. The breakthrough. But I, I... I can't seem to run it down. Oh, but you will. Well, we go to trial now in less than two weeks. Why don't you try to get some sleep now, please? I will, I will. Run along. Go on, I'll lock up. It's going to be all right, Dad. Sure, sure it is. Once I get into court, it's always all right. Well, that's about all I've got to count on, Jenny. Getting into court. Sheffield murder trial starts tomorrow. DA wants death penalty for O'Hara. Curtain certain of acquittal as murder trial opens. Well, I've got to hand it to Curtain, Ricks. He sure made a monkey out of me this morning. What a field day he had. <laughs> well, now you know what I've been talking about. Oh, but we've still got our surprise witness. What did I ever do to deserve a break like Norson? You, uh, sure Curtain doesn't know about him? He knows all about Frankie Korvac, but nothing about Norson. Once that sailor tells the jury that he actually saw the shooting... You know, I'd like to hear Norson's story just once more, Barra. You mind skipping lunch? I'd like to hear it again myself. I'll tell Paul to send him in. That's right, you say, Mr. Barra. All I want is to tell the truth. Now, last night, Norson, you told me that you were in that beer parlor down the street from Sheffield's house. Yeah, but they leave before the shooting. Maybe two, three minutes before. They got nothing to do. They walk slow, and they stop to light pipe. That is when they see shooting. Why did you wait until last night to call, Mr. Burra? I am pure sailor, fellow mister. I am not citizen of the United States. Maybe I scared a little. Well, there's nothing to be frightened about. I've seen your consul and the captain of your ship. You just go back to your hotel, say nothing to anyone. We won't need you until tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Burra, if I am witness for you, I miss my ship. I uh, get no money. We'll take care of all expenses and ten dollars a day. Mm, ain't very much, Mr. Barra. Ten dollar for important witness. Maybe I just sit around for a week or two. No money. You'll be paid while you're waiting. Mm, still not much. Sorry, but I'm not authorized to go any further. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's all for now, Mr. Norson. Thank you. Maggie Callback to take stand this morning. Young Hoodlum to turn state's evidence. Or that testimony may do no harm. Well, that's uh, quite a story you just told the jury, Korvac. Quite a story. Maybe I didn't tell it so good, sir, but I swear it's the truth. Hmm. So Johnny O'Hara persuaded you to commit this terrible crime with him. No, but that's not right, sir. All I did was drive his car. You uh, drove his car. And then Johnny entered Mr. Sheffield's house carrying a gun. Then he stole the suitcase containing a bar of gold, and then as he left the house, he deliberately fired three shots at Mr. Sheffield. Is uh, that more accurate, Frankie? Oh, yes, sir. I think so. Thank you. Oh, uh, you don't mind if I call you Frankie? Why should you care if I mind? I'm in trouble. I'm in bad trouble. Yes, I would say that you are, in spite of Mr. Barra's amazing conduct in permitting you to testify for the people. I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. I caution you once again, Mr. Curtain. I withdraw my remark, Your Honor. I asked you about your name, Frankie, because you haven't always used that name. Didn't you once use the name of Clark? Yes, sir. That was the time I was convicted of robbery. I was only 19 then. Called myself Frank Clark. They shouldn't let my old man hear about it. He was very sick, rest his soul. 
Look, I told Mr. Barra about it. I got nothing to hide. I didn't ask you for all that. I just asked for the name. And did you ever use the name of Friedman? In connection with an assault charge, mm -hmm. yes, sir. But it was all a mistake. You see, it was a union matter. He thought I was crossing the picket line, but what I was... You're not expected to go into details of all your crimes, Korvac. Just answer whether you were convicted of assault or not. Yes, sir. What degree, Mr. Korvac? Third degree, Your Honor. That's a misdemeanor. Oh, indeed. Yes, sir, only a misdemeanor. You've been a perjurer, a robber, an extortioner, and a professional strong arm man. Do you deny any part of that? I was only a kid, sir, a crazy kid. You make it sound worse than it was. But yet, when you claim that Johnny O'Hara suggested this robbery, you were perfectly willing to go along. Let Johnny take this chair and say I'm lying. The jury will know who's telling the truth. That's enough of that, Corvac. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but this man's trying to make me out a liar. I got to defend myself. I'm no lawyer. I don't That's know enough. about... Yes, sir, but I wouldn't have a you chance. You were stop talking. With... Yes, sir. I'll only answer questions. It won't happen again. Get on with the case, Mr. Contain. <laughs> It's almost two o'clock. Won't you go to bed? I can't sleep. I tried. Well, look, I'll get dressed and we'll go for a walk. I keep seeing that jury. I don't know what's the matter with me. These last two days in court, I, 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 I can't think straight. I can't find the words. I, I keep repeating to myself. Well, that's not what the papers say. Or they say you've been just... Well, the papers don't know, honey. But Barra knows, even Johnny knows, that something's wrong with me. You're doing your best. That's all anybody can but do. It isn't enough. It's that boy's life. I get into the courtroom and I find myself groping for questions. I, I, I can't remember things. Dad, Dad, what are you looking the for? Cap. There was a bottle in the cabinet. Yes, it's still there. We left it there purposely. I think maybe that this is just what I need. Just one drink. Oh, but you can't take one yes, drink. Yes, I can take one and I'm going to take one. I wanted this for two years, every day for two years. I know, Dad, I know. I fought it for the last time. It's not worth what I have to go through. Dad, look, I I'm not frightened. We've beaten this before. I'll get dressed and then Will we'll go for it. Will you stop it? Will you stop mothering me? Go and get yourself a husband like any normal girl should. Just cut out this protective custody. All right, drink that drink. Drink the whole bottle. I won't bother you. I'll leave you alone and you can fall up the stairs all by yourself. Jimmy, no, don't. You can learn to put yourself to bed because I won't be here. I'll be in my own home with my husband. Jimmy, Jimmy, don't talk Jeff's like that. Jeff's been waiting all this time, Dad. I won't have to be your keeper anymore. My father's stop keeper. Stop it. The nagging daughter of an incurable alcoholic. I told you to stop it. Oh, oh. oh Dad, I'm, I'm so sorry. I... Jimmy, I hit you. I hit you. I hit you. Act three of the Hollywood Radio Theater will continue in just a few moments. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Perhaps one of our greatest ambassadors was the humorist Artemis Ward who did a great deal to cement the friendship between America and England. In 1866, Artemis Ward arrived in London for a series of lecture tours, although he wasn't in the best of health. After his first lecture, an English newspaper wrote, There is certainly this foundation for a cordial understanding between the two countries calling themselves Anglo-Saxon, that the Englishman, puzzled by Yankee politics, thoroughly relishes Yankee jokes. When two persons laugh together, they cannot hate each other much so long as the laughter continues. As Artemis Ward continued his tour, in his own humorous way, he criticized both England and America, and the cordial understanding grew between the two countries. Although his health grew worse, Artemis Ward refused to abandon his tour, and he didn't stop until he collapsed in the middle of a lecture. Within a few days, he was dead at the age of 33. In announcing his death, the London Observer said, Artemis Ward never used his great powers of humor for that biting purpose which is implied in the word sarcasm. He's been a man not only of humor, but of good humor. There is no man among us who does not feel that he is the better for having known him. Since his landing in this country, he was taken by the hand in a feeling of brotherhood between our two countries. So it was that Artemis Ward proved to all America that by helping others... You help your country. The curtain rises on Act Three of The People Against O'Hara, starring Walter Pigeon as Jim Curtain 
and Janet Lee as Ginny. John O'Hara's trial drags on, and each passing day tends to bring him that much closer to the electric chair. The court been adjourned until tomorrow, and Jim Curtain's wandered down the street to a cafe. All along, Mr. Curtain? That's right, Augie. Give me a cup of coffee, will you? Hey, sure. Rough day in court, huh? Uh, real rough. Now, I don't understand that call, Mike. I mean, the way he's admitting everything. He's too anxious to talk. How come a nice guy like Mr. Barra lets a little rat like Corvac get away with murder that way? I don't think that Barra didn't try to break him down. He must have before he let him on the stand. But apparently he wouldn't break. No, Augie, you can't blame Barra for making the most of Corvac. Me? I just run a cafe. But I give you odds that Corvac ain't enough to swing a jury. Barra's got to have another witness. Uh, he has. At least I've heard rumors. Some sailor, merchant, seaman. He's supposed to have been on the other side of the street the night of the shooting. He'd uh, just come out of a beer parlor. Or something. I witness, huh? Mm. Hold that coffee, Argie, with him. Bring me a drink. Oh, you're kidding, Mr. Cotain. You don't want it. Right? I asked you to bring me a drink. Yeah, yeah, sure. <clears throat> Maybe I'd buy you a drink, yeah, mister? Oh, get out. The trial, it don't go so good for you, huh? The trial goes fine for me. It goes better, maybe, for Mr. Barra. Who are you? Hey, see, your boy killed that fella. Oh, oh, the eyewitness, uh, the people's pet. Hey, I'm just Sven Norsen. Mm -hmm. They come to Mr. Barra to help him. Only Mr. Barra don't want to help me. He only pays fences. So, uh, maybe I help you, mister, huh? Him poor sailor fella got to make a living. I told you once to get out of here. Now you get angry. Well, forget it, mister. They have drink and go. O'Hara never killed Sheffield. He never killed him. Sure, mister, sure. It was dark that night. You may have seen the killing, but... But you didn't see the man who did it. Mister, this ain't my country. One feller kill another feller. They ship in, they tell the truth, they ship out. It, it don't hurt Sven Norson. Uh, you tell me something. How far is Sheffield House from bar where I was, huh? Oh, 150 yards. More, maybe. I don't know. Maybe uh, I make a mistake. Maybe I drink too much. Maybe only one man in car. One man? Yeah. One man, maybe. Same man drive car and shoot Sheffield. But that's not what you told Mr. Barr, is it? Well, can't blame feller if he make a mistake. All right, Norton. How much? You are a big lawyer. You want to save that Yanni O'Hara. How much? Five hundred dollars. Okay. Jury finds O'Hara guilty. Sale as eyewitness testimony, final blow to defense. O'Hara certain to get death penalty. Nothing I can say, Barra. Norson double-crossed me, that's all. I paid him off. I bribed him, but it didn't work. You must have been insane, bribing mm -hmm. a witness. You must have known you'd been seen together that I'd hear about it. What kind of a prosecutor do you think I am? There's nothing more to be said. I sweated that check out of Norson ten minutes after he left you. What I can't understand is why you'd stick your neck out like that. Because Norson couldn't make a positive identification. He thinks he saw O'Hara. Same build, same height. Sure, he convinced the jury. But Norson never saw O'Hara because O'Hara wasn't there. And what would you do now in my place? Do? Don't have any choice. No. None whatsoever. You'll be disbarred. Maybe even a prison term. Your whole life shot to pieces. Oh, and I thought you were smart. You said you wanted me to sign a statement. I'll have a statement for you to sign when I'm good and ready. I'll know where to find you, won't I? Don't worry, Barra. I'll be around. Oh, stop by Rick's office. He wants to see you. Rick? Thanks. Maybe I will. There's nothing I can say or do about the bribery rap, Jim. No. But I got something that may interest you. You know O'Donnell, don't you, at City Prison? Well? He was telling me that Johnny O'Hara's sister just tried to get a pass to see him. Johnny O'Hara hasn't got a sister. No? Ricks, if this is on the level... Well, it's on the level, Jim. O'Donnell didn't get her name, but he says she was real pretty. 
Italian type, furs and stuff, you know? Thanks. Look, phone Ginny for me, will you? Huh? Tell her I uh, th- 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 that I may be late getting home. Tell her I'm all right. She doesn't know about the check? No, not yet. Uh, you don't have to worry about Vera giving it to the newspapers. He won't. When the time comes to tell Ginny, you'll tell her yourself. Thanks. Mrs. Lanzetta, remember me? No. No, go away. Please. Your husband introduced us, Curtain, the lawyer. If you want to see my husband, he's, he's upstairs in the office. You just sit in the car and wait for him, huh? Do you drive in every day and wait for him? What are you doing? Move over, Mrs. Lanzetta. We're driving out of here. I've got to talk to you. No. No, I don't dare. Just keep quiet. Start screaming and you'll be very sorry. About an hour ago, I went to Johnny O'Hara's home. I don't know what you're talking about. I was looking for something, anything, that would give me a lead. I finally found one. I found a receipt, the rental receipt for a post office box. That mean anything to you? No, nothing. I went to the post office, and I found the box. There was no way I could open it, of course, but I could look through that little glass window. There was one letter. The postmark said Lamberth, New Jersey. You're Johnny's girl, aren't you? You... Let him die and say nothing. My husband. I was afraid. I was afraid. You'd let Johnny die because you were afraid. I didn't know what to do. When they found Johnny guilty, I almost went crazy. I tried to see him at the prison, but they wouldn't let me. You were out with him the night of the murder, weren't you? Yes, yes. Johnny was with me. Please, Mr. Curtain. I'll do anything to help him. Are you willing to go with the district attorney? Now, I mean? Yes, I'll tell him everything I know. I don't care what happens to me now. I don't care. Lanzetta, now you said you fell in love with Johnny during the war. Yes, Mr. Barra. He stayed in Japan a long time after the war was over, but he never wrote to me. I met Mr. Lanzetta. He was a big man, rich. My mother was at me and at me, marry Mr. Lanzetta, marry the rich man. So you did. And then Johnny came back, and the love with Johnny and me started again. I'll call the prison, Rick. Get O'Hara down in here. I already did. I figured it'd save time. Brenda used to see you, Johnny. Johnny. Johnny, I told them. I told them you were with me that night. Uh, that's crazy, Mr. Barra. I haven't seen her in more than a year. You were with me that night. You're lying. I-, I won't talk to you. She can help you, Johnny. She can save your life. I told you I haven't seen her. Take him back, Rex. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Curtain. Uh, that stupid kid. No, no, not stupid. He's afraid for me. What my husband would do to me. Well, you tried, Curtain. But you believe her story, don't you? Off the record, you believe her? I'm never off the record. I can't make a move to set aside the verdict. The boy denies her story. Mr. Barrett, he, he doesn't mean that, Mrs. Lanzetta. He, he can't mean it. No? Rex, take her to a car, will you? You think it's safe to go home, Mrs. Lanzetta? I'll be all right. What does it matter? Barrett, please. I want to see O'Hara. Let me see Johnny alone. Don't be in such a hurry. I shouldn't tell you this, Curtain. But if I don't, I know Rick's will. The suitcase, Sheffield's suitcase. Well, what about it? Rick's had a hunch, so he sent the suitcase to the lab. Mm-hmm. We just got the report. Mm-hmm. It was filled with dope. What? Hidden away between the outside of the bag and the lining underneath. $200,000 worth. Dope? Narcotics thinks the suitcase came off a ship and that Sheffield was going to send it on to Chicago. Somehow Frankie Korvac heard about it and went after it. But not with Johnny O'Hara. I don't know that it wasn't Johnny, neither do you. Uh, have you made out that bribery indictment against me yet? No, but I can't stall it much beyond tomorrow. I wish I could. Then I'm free until tomorrow. That's all I want to know. Katane, wait. What do you think you're going to do? Just a wild idea, Barra, but maybe it'll work. Uh, you want to be back for dinner, Dad? Uh, no. No, I, I, I don't think so, Jenny. You might tell me something. I, you're being terribly mysterious. Uh, you'll be the first to know. What uh, What time is Jeff coming? Well, any minute, I think. Dad, Dad, I, I want to know where you're going. It's nothing important, Jenny. Just, uh, well, a couple of things to wind up at Mr. Barra. But you will phone. Sure, sure, I'll check in. And I, I want to say hello to Jeff. Oh, 
You got a minute, Mr. Lanzetta? What's the matter, Counselor? You want to see me? You know where the office is. I'm having dinner with friends. I'm busy. I, uh, I've had a bad time, Lanzetta. Yeah, you blow your case. And I hear you've been drinking again. Couldn't beat it, could you? Just a worn-out old lush. You're here for that loudmouth O'Hara, am I right? You once told me you could pick up a phone and call a few numbers. That was before the trial. They already give the verdict. I didn't think I'd need you. The boy's innocent, Lanzetta. I wouldn't know. Where's Miss Sheffield? Out of town. Why? I wanted to be sure the house will be empty tonight. Sheffield's house? I'm bringing the suitcase back to the house tonight. After all, it's her property now. A $20 suitcase? Look, I'm Lanzetta. Don't play games. It won't be the same suitcase, Lanzetta. Just one that looks like it. The hawk shops are full of them. Curtain, I can lift my finger and you're a dead man. You know that. I know your reputation and that's why I'm here. I think you know who killed Sheffield. No. I want that man to know that the suitcase will be in the house tonight. I wouldn't touch that suitcase for two million bucks. Ah, then you do know about it. I thought so. I know about a lot of things, but I don't handle dope. That stuff's for pigs. Look, just pass the word, that's all I ask. Mm, you've done me a favor once, eh? and you want to collect. Right. That guy will kill you. You know that, don't you? Well, I guess you've got your reasons. I have. Okay, I passed the word around. You're a lush counselor, but you got a lot of guts. Homicide, Nala. Hey, come on. Hicks! Yeah, that's right. Who's this? It don't matter. Look, you like Cortain? You don't want to see him get hurt, huh? What are you talking about? He's at the Sheffield's house. Cortain. He's waiting there for somebody. Waiting for who? He don't know who, but he's going to find out. What's Curtain want to commit suicide for? He's going to get it, just like Sheffield got it. Why did you call me? The guy does me a favor, I pay him back. Hello? Just checking in, honey. Everything all right? Oh, why, yes, dear, of course. Now, where are you? I'm at the Sheffield house, just waiting to meet someone. Ginny, he should be along any minute now. But, Dad, you sound so strange. Maybe it's the connection. I'm still on the case, Ginny, and I'm going to win it, too. Uh, well, what time will you be home? I, I don't know, dear. Now, let me talk to Jeff. All right. Uh, he wants to talk to you, Jeff. Oh, thanks. Hello? Jeff, you going to marry that girl of mine? Well, I certainly hope so, Mr. Gertain. In a way, it's been my fault, hasn't it? Well, don't let anything stand in your way again. You marry her. Soon. You understand? Well, no, I don't understand, but it's a swell idea. Good night, Jeff. You stay at the desk, Cartain. Where's the suitcase? It's here. I'll turn on the light. You turn on nothing. The phone. Who else you've been talking to? No one. I I called my house, that's all. I would have cut your tongue out. Use your brains. I'm doing this to help Frankie. You're for old Harry and not for Frankie. I'm for both. Frankie doesn't have to talk about this suitcase. Just let him say he lied about O'Hara. Why should he? Well, if he doesn't, you and Frankie get it. Maybe not right now, but sooner or later. I have Lanzetta's word. Frankie's doing what I told him to do. He's a smart kid. The most he'll get is five to ten. He made his deal with Barra. What makes you so sure you can trust Barra? He's a district attorney. He's got a job to do. I'll keep his word. What if he resigns? Now, with Lanzetta, you know just where you stand. Lanzetta don't know everything. He don't even know kill Sheffield. I killed him, Mr. Curtain. Me. Frankie's big brother. Lanzetta's going to find out that you crossed me up. He won't like it. You talk good, mister. You're making a big mistake, Corvac. I came here to make a deal. The suitcase is yours if Frankie clears O'Hara. Lanzetta wants it that way. I got news for you. Lanzetta's dead. Now take the suitcase and start walking the back door. You can put your gun away. There's nothing I can do. That's right. That's right, mister. Nothing. Hey, where you are, both of you? Don't move. Sarah, Foster right here. Head on the light. Ricks, get down. He's got a gun.
He's coming around, Barry. He's trying to talk. Now, take it easy, Jim. There's an ambulance here. We're going to take you to the hospital. Corvac's brother? Huh? Dead. Where's Barra? I'm here, Jim. You heard? All we need to know. Johnny O'Hara's going free. Uh, I beat you, Barra. I got Johnny off. I could do it again, too. Anyway, thanks for coming here. But it wasn't necessary. Kovac would have killed you. What good would have that have done, O'Hara? Look at the desk. It was dark when he came in. He didn't... <laughs> didn't see me when I wrote down his name. <laughs> I was... Hoping you'd find it. Doctor, <laughs> step aside, please. <coughs> Rex, this bribery indictment. Yeah. Somebody else is going to have to press the charge. I won't do it. Now tell him, Barra. He'd like to hear you say that. Doctor, there's something I'd like to say to him. Sorry, Mr. Barra. You're too late. I hope it wasn't important. In a moment, our stars will return. This is really a story about two people. One is Chief Petty Officer Harry Frame, a veteran Navy electrician who saw lots of action in the war in the Pacific. The other is Mrs. Sadaya Ishiwata of Tokyo. Mrs. Ishiwata turned her home and her fortune over to 53 boys and girls of all ages who were orphaned by World War II. And Chief Frame devoted his off-duty hours to helping this tiny Japanese lady. He organized his friends into work teams, and because of their work, the home took on a bright new look. New panes of glass were installed, a new girl's dormitory was built, and twice a week, a Navy truck rolled up with leftover food, writing paper, worn-out clothing, and other contributions from the men. Chief Frame made it his private project toward better relationships between people of two different countries, and it's paid off in mutual goodwill. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are, two stars that all the people are waiting for, Walter Pigeon and Janet Lee. by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.